well, let's move on to the next thing, which is sales plan. Yes, indeed, sales. We talked about marketing, right? Sales and marketing. Well, here it comes. How are you going to take someone's dollar and get it out of their pocket, put it into your pocket? Isn't that the goal, right? Take someone's dollar out of their pocket and put it into your pocket. Well, you know I stress the word quality. And sales, if you have something of quality, people will pay for it. And uh, you can charge more and more because of the high quality of it. So something you might want to consider while working on your sales plan is section 11 of the, intellect of the uh, business plan. And lots of subsections to this. So sales management, sales objectives, sales strategies, pricing strategies, profit sources, sales forecasting, uh, growth strategies, uh, sales programs, sales affiliates, uh, merchant online sales strategy. Uh, recordings sales, performance sales, publishing sales, distribution sales. You got uh, distribution can be done through brick and mortar and through online. And uh, you've also got your content licensing as well as your sales projective. So when you're putting together a sales plan, um, you've got lots of things to consider, all these different strategies and so forth. Now, if you don't have any sales, the hard part is to come up with a forecast. Uh, how can you forecast if you don't have any past references? So you're going to have to think about any of these forecast things in your sales things here. And the only one that I see that might, um, the growth strategy could be, a, could be a forecast, but your sales strategy is definitely going to be a forecast on where you're going to be going with this. So, you know, you're going to be thinking about sales with live performances. You're going to be sales with CDs. You'll have sales with some of your T-shirts that you're trying to sell. Uh, you'll also have sales with trying to get your songs into movies or television shows, uh, those kind of things. And it's going to be hard to uh, forecast that until you get some sort of feedback. So in your sales plan, uh, when you get to a sales forecast, for example, you might want to just put in there that this topic has been considered and will be reevaluated once sales start happening. At least you've addressed the topic. Uh, and put it into your plan. But I can tell you this, that if you don't do anything, your forecast will be zero. So you really have to think about, um, you know, forecasting something. For example, um, we talked about this earlier. You want to have uh, more streaming by September 1st. Okay, well, you've set a goal, but now you have to put the strategy into place to make the goal happen. And you can do that with a sales strategy. You can say, okay, based on the numbers that we're going to try and hit 10,000 new fans before between now and September 1st, and out of those 10,000, historically speaking, 6% of them will purchase our, our material. Okay, and that's true, 6%. Okay, so then you can look at the numbers and start crunching it from that. With 10,000, 6%, you've got 600 new potential forecasts to be looking into. So. Something to consider on that end of it. And yep, great plan. Can we get some details? Okay, what's the sales plan with where we're going? First thing is you have to look at a sales management. So if you're gonna manage your sales department, do you have a team? Uh, is it just you? Uh, if it's just you, that's okay, but what are your what's the plan to make this happen? How are you going to manage these sales? So once again, it's going to go back to your projects, it's going to go back to your products and services. So each one will have its own sales management uh, overview on how that's all going to come about. Okay, and all of it's going to go into your sales plan. Sales manager. So are you going to be managing this by saying, well, in the morning, I'm going to be trying to get some bookings. In the afternoon, I'm going to try and get some uh, CD sales. And every day I'm going to try and manage this the same way. That way you're separating things. You're putting your management into different pockets on what's going to work for you and how that's going to work for you. So by doing this, you're going to come up with your sales objectives. 
once again, be specific on your sales. So you want to be objective on where you're going with this, but you got to come up with some good goals. So as I've mentioned to you before, be specific, but come up with a time deadline. I want to sell 10 new CDs by next week. Okay, that puts some things into motion. What do you got to do to do that? That's your objective. Okay, now you can come up with your strategy. How are you going to do that? You're going to do that by going door to door. You're going to make some phone calls. You're going to put it on your merch table. You're going to call the record store. What's your objective? What's your goal? How are you going to make the strategy work for that? So coming up with your strategy makes sense. You got to know your market. You got to know your company in order to know what products and services you have available in the first place. You got to identify your customer. Who's the fan customer? Who's the music industry customer? You got to look at the metrics behind it all. How are you going to get your product to the customer, right? And you got to look at the art. Okay, so what's the art that you're selling? Once again, I'm pushing the word quality. You only want to release quality. So if it's a quality song, put it out there. See what happens. Get it rolling. Make it work. You can do it. And then what about pricing? Mm, this is tough, right? How are you going to do this? If it's free, it's not worth anything. So I don't like free. However, as I mentioned to you in the last class, a lot of things that I recommend to these uh, artists that I work with is I say, they have a thing on their website that says, our services are free, but our costs are not. Donate. And so a lot of times they're making more money by asking fans to donate and then getting a download or a CD or whatever, as opposed to um, charging a fee, okay? So coming up with pricing, how do you price the value of a song that's being pitched to Steven Spielberg? How do you price how much you charge the Beachland Ballroom to hire the artists to come in the tavern, to come and play and perform in the tavern? How do you decide on how much a CD is going to cost a fan at a gig? How about a t-shirt? What's the pricing strategy? You can't make it too low, you lose money. You can't make it too high because no one will buy it. So how do you come up with this strategy to make it work? Well, you got to look at your profit sources. Okay, so what things are going to work for you the best? What sources are coming across that's going to be the low-hanging fruit? Go after the low-hanging fruit first. What things can you sell first? Beginning artists, typically, it's their services of performing. Now, if you're a producer, you're an engineer, it's still performing, okay? You're performing in the studio. So I noticed it's, you know, when I was looking at the artist development plans, not all of you are artists, uh, musician artists. Most of you are. Uh, not all of you are songwriters that you're putting together. Most of you are, but not all of you. Some of you are, are looking specifically at a genre of the industry um, and that's fine but get a look at your profit sources and the more sources that you have the better your chances of success and once again go after the ones with the low-hanging fruit which ones are gonna sell first I would think that if you're a songwriter doing a solo gig, you could probably get a solo gig a lot faster than trying to put together a band and trying to get a booking for a band. Okay. Solo artist, right? You're a band and the artist is a band and wants to put out, you know, things just with the band. It's a little bit more difficult. Your profit sources have been narrowed. So you have to look at these sources. I try to maximize the profit sources for all the artists that I work with. And typically, I've really broken it down to four. Live performances, sales of recordings, sales of licensing, and sales of merchandise. 
there's others in there, but those are the ones that I'm concentrating mostly with these artists. And I have to say that a lot of them do teaching on the side. They'll teach guitar lessons or things like that. And sure, that's an income source. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a teacher right here. I love it. Uh, it's a profit source. I do it for free, but it is a profit source. Um, I really do enjoy it. I never thought I'd get into teaching until this opportunity arose and I took up look it up on it. Okay, forecast. We talked about the forecast being the most difficult part, especially if you haven't done this before. Um, this corona scare has uh, changed forecast for lots of artists, and um, it uh, makes it a scarier time when you're not working. As you know, um, it really doesn't help the artist by uh, not working. Got to work. So if you're not live performing, how are you making some money? Perhaps you're songwriting. Perhaps you're pitching songs. Perhaps you're looking at publishing instead of live performances. I don't know. But this all will change as the forecast changes, and that comes down to risk management, which we really haven't gotten into yet. That's finance but it really all ties together with all these pieces of parts. Same with your growth. What's your growth strategy? Um, I get artists that tell me all the time, yeah, I'm dropping an album next week. And I always ask them, well, what's the single? Well, you know, it'll be one of the songs on the album. Okay. Once the single has played, does that mean the album's dead? My suggestion? Put out a single, put out another single, put out another single, put out another single. Show consistency. That'll show your growth strategy right there. If you put out a single once a week or once a month or however it's going to be, it's going to be an ongoing thing. It's going to be part of your growth strategy. You put out an album, when's the next album coming out? Who's going to wait that long? Is there a growth strategy behind it? Not in today's market. Today's market, single, 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 single. Yeah, you'll put on an album after your fifth single. Put all those singles on one album. And then you have a couple other ones ready to go. Part of your growth strategy. Okay, sales programs. This isn't... Not necessarily in place with you, but it might be if you work with an agent, for example, or a physical distributor, um, or maybe a talent buyer. You know, um, I can see this typically with, with a physical distributor. Uh, you, you tell them for every 10 CDs that they distribute and sell that you'll give them one for free uh, in order to encourage them to come up with this. Um, the other sales strategy for a program might be that the um, you give the agent a bonus after the 10th booking. Or you tell a talent buyer, listen, instead of booking me one time this year, if you were to book me every six weeks um, for free, or I'll give it to you for half price, and this way you get more bookings out of it. So some sort of sales programs to make that work. Sales affiliates. Uh, these are people that are uh, affiliated with you, making money because of you, and you're making money because of them, your affiliation. And I may have brought this up in a previous class where, let's say, the artist uh, plays a guitar. And on their website, they have a link to buy a Gibson guitar and the link goes to Amazon and the fan who comes to the website says oh I want to get a new Gibson guitar just like this artist and they click on that website it goes to Amazon and they buy the guitar it makes money because it's a sales affiliate Amazon becomes a sales affiliate so the guitar company Gibson makes money because they're affiliated with Amazon. Amazon makes money. You buy it or your fan buys it from Amazon. Amazon makes money. The guitar company makes money and you make money. So this is a sample of a sales affiliate. 
And what's your merch strategy? Maybe to have a table at your gigs, okay? Are you gonna have shirts, hats, t-shirts, uh, polos, uh, hoodies, uh, guitar picks? What are you gonna have as your strategy for merchandise? Are you gonna start with one and move ahead from that? If you're gonna have a shirt, are you gonna have more than one size? Are you gonna have more than one color? Are you gonna sell it offline? Are you gonna sell it only at the merch table? Uh, what's the strategy? And then how are the fans going to pay for it? How are you going to accept their money? Cash only? You're going to use Square? Uh, Google Pay? What is it? What's the strategy for the sale? Is your merch table going to look good? Is it going to have a tablecloth? Is it going to have a backdrop? Is there going to be somebody working? Put it in the strategy. Online sales strategy. Okay, so I hope that you understand that you're going to need a website for the artist. That's part of your strategy for your marketing, your promotion. Got to have a website. That's the front door today. Good idea to offer merchandise on your website. Wouldn't it be a good idea to offer tickets to your fans for your next show on your website? So online sales strategies, are you also going to be selling through other means? For example, are you going to take your CD and sell it on CD Baby? That's a sales strategy online. Are you going to be offering downloads through TuneCore? That's a sales strategy online. So consider whatever these sales strategies are for you to make that work the best way you can. Okay, what about recording sales? Look at this, Britney Spears. Blunk, right? Do you remember her? Well, she was a big star back in the day. Um, not so much anymore. Well, her recording sales strategies were there to do the downloads or CDs or vinyl or whatever it is, but come up with some sort of sales strategy for your recordings. going to be sold how are you going to transfer money from their pocket into your pocket and these recordings be done through sound exchange sure can the recordings uh, be done through soundcloud yeah through reverb nation yeah so what's the strategy where are you going to go with your recordings and how are you going to make that happen uh, performances your performance strategies. So coming up with some sort of strategy to sell tickets. Hmm, how are you gonna do this? Offer it online, offer links to um, uh, StubHub, uh, for example, or Ticketron or Ticketmaster or any of those kind of places. Uh, what's the strategy for your performance sales? How are you gonna get butts and seats. How is that going to happen for you? Um, because the performances is really going to be the key. The more people you can bring into a gig, the more money you're going to make and the more money you're going to make not only from ticket sales but from merch sales. And those fans will turn into bigger and better profits for the artist. So what's the sales strategy for performance? Selling tickets. I don't know about any of you guys, but they've, you know, Gorilla Productions here in Cleveland, they they make their artists sell tickets, you know, pay to play kind of thing. Um, don't know if I agree with it or disagree with it. I see the pros and cons. Don't know if it's good, bad, or ugly. For a beginning artist, it's um, it's an interesting learning experience. For those that are experienced, uh, they're not going to go out and sell tickets. But on the other hand, you look at what um, Bruce Springsteen did on his last tour. He went out and bought all the tickets to all of his shows and then sold them all on StubHub as a resale for more money. Is that legal? I think it is. Is that scalping? 
well, scalping's legal in Ohio. So it's a possibility that that could work out where an artist can actually buy their own tickets to resell them also. But how? How are you going to transfer that? And what about publishing? Okay. Now, in your artist development plan, you've identified whether or not you're going to be doing self-publishing or working with a third-party music publisher. What's the plan? That's in your artist development plan. But what about your sales for this? Some of my clients are signed to some major publishers. But you know what? They're not, the publishers aren't the one knocking on doors for them. They're doing it themselves. They're doing their own publishing, their own pitching. Uh, well, aren't, isn't the publisher supposed to do that? Yeah. Will they? Well, the publishers are waiting for the phone to ring. They're order takers. They're not salesmen. So sometimes you have to be your own salesman, even though you got a publishing deal. Still making those calls. However, if you're signed to a major publisher, you can always say, hey, this is John. I'm coming from Sony Tree Publishing. Well, that will open the eyes up to all the people that are dealing with Sony Tree. Just as an example, uh, where you're going with that. Publishing sales can also be done online on yourself, by yourself. Put your music up there. Put it up on uh, various social online music distribution platforms and reap the benefits. That's publishing. You're doing it yourself. You're putting it up on these platforms and you're expecting to get paid. Depending on the platform, some of them charge zero percentage. Some of them charge up to 50%. So it depends on which online music distribution platform you're looking to work with in order to make that work for you. And what about now, this can be online distribution, it can be brick and mortar distribution, it can be various different types of distribution. Uh, you can even have it set up where you email your music to people. There's mail order, there's online sales, you can sell your um, music and your products at events, uh, you can wholesale through distributors, you can retail at your own merch table, uh, you can call people up and ask them if they want to buy new your tickets to your show uh, and then again you can have an agent um, helping you with your sales to your um, music um, professionals that you're going to be dealing with but you got to have a strategy to make this work so brick and mortar basically is how to get it into the store how to get it on the merch table it's not online but online is in today's market almost more important uh, the stores are doing things, um, just becoming less and less music stores, music retail stores out there. And unless you're in the top 100 on uh, Billboard, you're not going to be accepted into the larger stores like Walmart and Target and those kind of places that have that. It just won't happen unless you're on the charts. So what's your strategy for online distribution? Perhaps you're going to be going through one of these online music distribution platforms, as I just mentioned. But what's the strategy? Online, you can do it all kinds of different places. iTunes? Okay. How are you going to get on iTunes? Do you have a strategy? Who's your aggregator? Do you have a strategy if you don't have an aggregator? Are you doing research on all the aggregators? There used to be only six. Now there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and do you give up your publishing by dealing with these aggregators? I challenge you to go read the uh, agreement that TuneCore gives you. Compare that to the agreement at CD Baby. Both of them are aggregators. Both of them can get you onto iTunes. Look at their agreements. What are you getting into by these online music distribution platforms? And where are you going to be able to monetize? Putting your music up is one thing. Monetizing is a whole different game. So consider that. Now what about content? You can start this today. All of you. 
can start this today. Content licensing. You don't have to be performer. You don't have to have a recording. Um, it's better if you had a demo, but you can license your content in many, many ways. You can license it to television. You can license it to cable shows. You can license it to film. You can license it to publishers. You can um, start your licensing by setting up your PRO, ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. You can begin your licensing by registering with Sound Exchange. So you've got to be set up in order to make the money, but you can begin licensing today. I don't know if you're going to make money, much money today. It's near the end of the day, but tomorrow. So content licensing. Uh, brick and mortar brought that up. Content licensing and your projections. Okay, so what I would recommend that if you've got a master, not a demo, you put out a master, um, you might want to test market it. We talked about this in the marketing a little bit. Hire a company like Tinderbox uh, to come out and test market various parts of the country. And then when you're doing that, you can realize that, you know, you want to Utah and maybe Arizona, I don't know. Target it. See what happens. Then you can base some projections for the rest of the country based on those four or five markets. And they're all different markets, but you'll be able to get some research done and some feedback on what's going to work and what's not going to work. So you can come up with your projections a little bit easier to make that work. Okay. Put it all together. Put it into your sales plan summary, which is the .01. And uh, that'll be 11.01. The sales is section 11. And that way you'll be able to move right ahead with your sales plan. Okay, any questions on the sales part of this? Is everybody snoring? No. <laughs>